The Frankfurt man accused of pinning his ex-wife between two cars appearing in court this morning. She's the only incumbent, the only one from Oneida County, and the only one to appear on the Democratic, Republican, and Conservative Party lines. If you question Jim's love for the Boilermaker, just take a look. I want everyone to see this. This is commitment, people. What precautions exactly are being taken at the state capitol? Well, you can see behind me. The weather's starting to cool down. We had some rough couple of minutes about half an hour ago. What would you do moving forward to bring aid to those small businesses still struggling to keep their doors open? Well, thank you, Thomas. These two chambers behind me are the anaerobic digesters, and they can hold up to 2.4 million pounds. You would redistrict in a way that's favorable to your party. If they were to bring in an Ithaca from Tompkins mm -hmm. County, and you were to be able to have a stronghold in Ithaca, and in Binghamton, that would be a huge win for Democrats. How likely is it that the Binghamton area could be a main deciding factor for this race once again? There's no question about it. You can hear performing right behind me, and they're performing for the final time. Our Jen Selig joins us live from the scene. Jen, what's the future for this historic building? Yeah, Thomas. Are there any other resources that you use or maybe you would suggest to someone who's getting in this world for the first time? Okay, there are two things I would recommend. Be sure to keep an eye on the website for any updates on local news. I think Colleen just dropped something. So clearly we need to get out of here. I'm Thomas Fleming with your Eyewitness News Digital Report. Oneida County has set new all-time highs in single-day new COVID-19 cases, not once but twice this week. And the county executive says this is no coincidence. It's a direct result from lax behavior and in some cases outright disregard of COVID-19 guidelines and regulations. This is the surge that we were told about for the fall. It is not coming, it is already here. After a surge in COVID cases over this past week, Oneida County is seeing its highest amount of active COVID cases since the beginning of the pandemic. County health officials reported 49 new cases on both Friday and Saturday, 79 over the next two days, and set new single-day records with 68 and 74 cases on Tuesday and Wednesday. That brings the current active total to well over 500, the highest total since March. County Executive Anthony Pacenti says a portion of those new cases have resulted from parties and gatherings, including a recent wedding with over 200 reported people, and it's starting to affect government facilities. The results are a cluster that has resulted in a contact tracing effort that has effectively shut down our child advocacy center. Vicente mentioned a wedding that took place in Trenton at a private residence. A police officer in attendance has since returned to work 20 miles south in Utica, and now employees at that facility have tested positive. We can't let our guard down. Uh, we, we truly can't. Oneida County Sheriff Robert Machel says it wasn't one of his officers. The Child Advocacy Center employees are currently working remotely, but he hopes everyone can be back in a few weeks. I'm sure um, that people at a wedding, you know, 20 miles north of here, didn't think that it was going to affect the operations of a, a, a specialized, highly trained unit that only deals with victims of sexual abuse cases, but it did. And Sheriff Machel did share with us, fortunately no children have tested positive for COVID-19 from the Child Advocacy Center. He did say as well that officers are still taking new cases and answering calls there. Reporting in the newsroom, Thomas Fleming, Eyewitness News. How do you turn this to this? For the Onata Herkimer Solid Waste Authority, it's easy thanks to its $3.4 million facility here in Utica. Recycling coordinator Sam Brown says this plant allows residents to easily turn their leftover food scraps into energy. It has already made a significant environmental impact since the plant's construction a year ago. Since we've opened in May of 2019, we've been able to divert over 8 million pounds of food waste from the landfill. Plus, the electricity created from those scraps helps power the wastewater treatment plant, which in turn keeps our lakes and rivers clean. Here's how it works. The food gets collected and dumped into a depackager that separates the packaging from the food. It then gets combined with a liquid mixture that helps break it down into a slurry. That slurry then gets sent next door to the Oneida County Wastewater Treatment Plant and hooked up to what's called an anaerobic digester. Once the waste is commingled with the wastewater treatment plant's feedstock, um, bacteria and organisms in the, in the anaerobic digesters uh, start to break the material down, and when they do that, they release methane gas. 
That gas is then collected and turned into electricity to help power the water treatment plant. There's a lot of science there, but for residents, the process is easy. Just bring your scraps to the facility and leave it at the drop-off bin. The tipping fee for the food to energy plan is $40 per ton, which is more than a $20 savings in comparison to Oneida and Herkimer County's garbage tipping fee. Brown says the program's success has been largely due to the community's willingness to participate. Um, so that's really a testament to not only our program, but to the residents and businesses in this region. For more information, visit OHSWA.org. Reporting in Utica, Thomas Fleming, Eyewitness News. A lot of these areas have seen swings in representation in the past decade plus. WUTR's Thomas Fleming explains. The similarities between Anthony Brindisi and Claudia Tenney are as close as the contest they're in. Both Brindisi and Tenney are attorneys who have served in the New York State Assembly representing neighboring districts. And in fact, the two are neighbors living within walking distance of each other. Of course, they have also each represented the 22nd District in the House. The 22nd District was recreated into its current form following the 2010 census. That's when the old 24th District, which was primarily the Mohawk Valley and some points west, was blended with the old 22nd District, which was exclusively Southern Tier. It remained a Republican District by registration, but with strong Democrat influence from its urban areas. In 2016, there was an open seat race. Brindisi passed on the opportunity. On the Republican side, Claudia Tenney jumped in. She had tried just two years prior in 2014 when she primary Congressman Richard Hanna and fell short. Tenney was elected to Congress in a three-way general election in 2016 against two political first-timers. In 2018, Brindisi ran and upset Tenney by just under 4,500 votes, becoming only the second Democrat elected to Congress in the northern section of his 22nd district in 70 years and the first to defeat an incumbent in 68 years. This race is already in the history books. The most votes cast in a local congressional race and the margin of victory will most likely be the closest in local congressional history, the previous record being 138 votes in 1948. In Utica, I'm Thomas Fleming reporting. We've now seen this viral video showing one man hurling racial slurs at a Utica woman. We spoke with her on what happened that we didn't see and what got her to start reporting. We're up here on the fire truck, so we got a, we got a pretty nice view to see all the runners coming this way. We are here live in downtown Utica, right on the state office building. Yes, Thomas, today was our first day kicking off our daily briefings about COVID-19. Actually, I just spoke to a couple students just a little while ago. Controversy in Cooperstown behind one word. Is it racist and should it be changed? The DA's office is currently working on interviewing friends and family. Are there any other shortages that you're experiencing? We have been notified by the Red Cross. The days of you being woken up by fireworks might soon be over. The Utica police busting two local businesses selling them illegally. Were there any international reporters who were particularly vocal about their country being eager for a team? Yeah, the guy from Mexico City. Live from the Adirondack Bank Center, it's the Utica Comets 2019 home opener. We have not yet seen any shortages. However, we know that that is a real possibility. 